Now let's see, is the driver's seat comfortable? Yes, I'm having no problems. I cannot believe how easy the Transit is to drive. I have always had small cars. The only van I've ever driven was a Travato which says on a ProMaster, which we rented. Uh, so that's the only time I've ever had any kind of a van. And so we got the Transit, and uh, it, it's like butter, man. It's just so cool. It's just easy to drive. I have no issues. My wife drove it for a little while. Uh, she had no issues. Uh, now, of course, we're taking side roads and that kind of stuff, and we're trying to avoid big towns like we completely avoided we went around chicago so we wouldn't have to deal with chicago traffic um we actually had a little bit of traffic in a small town called greeley colorado it a, it's getting bigger i think that's why they're starting to get a lot more traffic and it was still easy to drive not an issue let's see what is the flooring steel wool i, I think it was um i can't remember uh you'll notice that the the rug here that we got is a little shorter than the floor because on a duo, we have the bed has these little wool things when you pull them out. So you don't want it on the rug, you want it on the floor. So it's made purposely a little, not quite as wide as the entire uh, floor so that you can do that. I think for a traveler, since you don't have anything pulled out, you shouldn't have any kind of issue with that. It would probably completely cover the floor. But because it's the duo, we need a little extra space, so you do see a little bit of which is fine. I mean, the floor is nice, and so I like it. Let's see, TV, 12 volt. And that's the other thing that uh, I confirmed. The only things that are uh, 110 amp or 120 volt, uh, I'm sorry, 120 volt wall sockets, things like that, and the microwave, everything else, AC, the lights, for us, since we're in the duo, it is a 12 volt, it's a 22 inch 12 volt TV. The Sony thing here, the DVD player and the JBL, all 12 volt. We hardly ever have to have the inverter on unless we're cooking. That's really it. And, you know, when we put in the induction co or uh, stove, I mean, induction uh, cooktop, or if we uh, plug in, uh, we've never had to plug anything in the plugs except for the induction cooktop, but. If we needed plugs for something, I don't know, hair dryers, I mean, which we don't use, but I mean, if we had something like that, we could plug it in. And the microwave, and that's it. You really do save a lot on power because of that. that. We stayed one night, like I said, boondocking at a uh, casino, but then we stayed at RV parks the other few nights. And we didn't have to fill up the water except for the last one, and really, we were still halfway full. But we filled up anyway just to make sure that we knew how to fill up. So let's go into the bathroom area. These are the screens now. Oh, these are the new screens. These kind of accordion-looking screens. I don't know if it's easy to see or not, but, you know, so the plastic things. Um, me, I love them. I think they're fantastic. If they pop off the rail at all, which so far it never has, uh, it's, it's just, you just pop them back in. There's no big deal. But this has never actually popped off. And they're really light and easy to move. This is a... Duo SL, what used to be called Duo. So we have the bathroom right here. Uh, front cab, the sofa, living, whatever you want to call it area. And then the bathroom comes next. This is the vanity mirror. Oh, hello. How are you doing? Hello. 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 How are you doing? Um, we have a little control panel here if we want to do little reading lights and stuff, which are also on that panel. Uh, sometimes we, we just need a light before we're going to bed so we can pop something on here if we want. There's also, if things were on and we wanted only certain lights off, we could switch them off here. We haven't bothered with that. There's cabinet space up here uh, for bathroom essentials. Kind of stuff. Vanity, like I said, my meds and stuff are right back here. This is where the water fill is, okay? And because we're on a duo, it tends to be easier to either bring the hose right in from the front door or just have the back door open and just pull it in from there. We do have that little socket thing that you can pop open and then you can have the hose go in through there. But it, it, there's no need for that really for us. Because just because of the design, there's just a lot of ways to get to this water fill. So we don't really have to worry too much about that. And now the bag is vertical, not horizontal for the fresh water. So people were having problems with, I think they had to burp their bags, whatever that, you know, get air out or whatever. Well, because it's vertical now, 
the entry point is on the top and there's stuff on the bottom. And so the air tends to come up. Whereas with the flat ones, the air would get trapped on one corner and all this kind of stuff. And you'd have to press it to get it to the right side to get it to burp. Now, when I pop this open and I put the hose in, I can just do this kind of thing with the hose and it lets air out and it bubbles out. So we don't have to worry about that. So I can lift this up. This is our toilet. It is a sea head. It's a composting toilet, but it uses that hemp material I showed you earlier. It goes in here and you can do your business, that kind of stuff. You spin things around so things mix correctly, that kind of stuff. It has a, uh, what they humorously call a pee tank, pee dash tank, which is where your pee goes. And then you have to dump the pee tank up every couple of days because it only holds, it doesn't hold as much as the solid waste area. You've got that if you want to drain your gray water, you can you, you flip that over and you can uh, do your gray water. This thing on the left, uh, apparently that is for if you want to drain everything for winter so you can get rid of all the water. There's little areas that, it, that, that you couldn't quite drain everything so you can flip that open as well and it would drain everything. Um, but the water bed, the shower is right there. The shower head is right here. So you, you can pop that open and there's your shower head. Uh, and some people are like, there's no place to mount the shower head, which is true. There's nothing here where you can mount the shower head up. But I don't really think that's an issue because you're not doing long showers. You're doing military showers, which is basically you soak yourself up, you put the shower head down, you, then you lather up, then you put the shower head and you, you wash all the soap off and that kind of thing. So you're not really using it consistently. And what you do is that you pull the shower head out and you bring this back down so that you don't get your toilet wet. So your shower head can just lay here because it's not off button. It's not like it's going to spray water everywhere, unless you had it on, obviously. Then you just, you know, shower and whatever. Then you can put it down, bring it up, shower again, put it down, bring it up, shower again, that kind of stuff. So I don't really have an issue with that. Some people want to have some kind of mount, but uh, there really isn't one for that. But let me get this cloth out of the way. And you see, this is an inspection hatch. And if I open this up, there's my full tank. There's my water back. I can tell that it's full. <laughs> so I can feel the water right there. There's probably a little extra space for water because we have been using it a bit because you can just feel it and you can tell how strong it is. And when this is totally full, it is rock solid. You can tell it's totally full. This is part of the shower head. One thing we noticed is when you're filling it up, you want to pull this out all the way because this will get trapped between the wall, this little hose bit for the shower head, where it's going to get trapped between the wall and the water, and you're going to have to pull it out because it gets stuck. Um, bathroom, yeah, these are these are accordion things. There's actually two. There's one right here, and there's one over here. This is the one we came in through. So, and this one actually blocks this side. Oh, Sherry says in the Traveler or Dolphin S, you can take the shower hose out the back door. I don't think we'd be able to reach the back door. We would probably be able to reach the front door. I don't think that would be an issue. Uh, uh, the curtain helps to deflect shower water from toilet. Yeah, that's very true because when you bring it down that way, you don't have water hitting the uh, toilet itself. And also when you're taking a shower, you would take the rug out because down here, there's the drain. I think the Traveler may actually have two drains. I'm not sure because there's an extra one here that we don't have. But um, And you don't have to have these rugs. If you don't want them, you don't need them because the flooring is fine. Uh, in the Duo, you actually get numerous rugs. You're going to get one for the front. Then you're going to get one in the bathroom. Then you get one for this kitchen hallway. And then there's one for the back where the storage is. And if you look right here, these little vents back here, this is what I was talking about, that we were blocking it. Because we have this big plastic box where we had, you know, we brought everything with us. And so that plastic box is not actually going to be there all the time. It's, and it had slid over and covered all of that, that little vent thing that it needs, and these two little round vents. So this is another inspection hat thing that you can get into the storage. Here is the kitchen. Right there, there's the sink. Oh, good, we don't have any dirty dishes in there. If I open up this, this is the garbage can, which is cool because they actually have, the bottom is a garbage can that they cut up and bolted down so that your garbage can can just 
fit right there and never move. I don't know if you can see it, but here's some hoses and things. So, and over here, if you ever had a problem, uh, like the mixing temperature is not quite right for the hot, you can move this. Trust me, you don't want to move it too much because the hot water is actually, because it goes through their, uh, whatever they call that hot water system, it's like 170 degrees, which is scaldingly hot. You don't want that. So it actually mixes with cold water so that it doesn't get too hot for you. There's the filter, a filter for the water. Um, and it also has a little drawer right here. So you can put all your kitchen utensils and things. So that's really cool. And they're all soft closed, so you don't have to slam them shut. They just shut normally. Um, because of the vitrifrigo is a little lower, a little shorter, but a little wider. Because it's wider, we lost the place where the lagoon table slides in. We don't get that because the fridge takes up that space. But because it's shorter, we now have this netting screeny stuff that we can put stuff in. And this little metal thing right here, that is our induction uh, cooktop. Uh, that The one we had originally, that was the problem with the electrical. It screwed up some stuff because it was a bad induction cooktop. They had never had actually a bad one, and of course we got the bad one. Um, so now what Terry's doing is every single induction cooktop is going to be tested in the van that it's going to be built for to make sure it's not going to trip anything. These induction cooktops are really good because you must have the pot on there, the, the magnetic pot or steel, whatever you're using, or it will show that it's on, but it'll keep flashing and it will not actually heat up without something on top. It's a safety feature, so that's really good. These are more vents for the AC. We have them pointed towards the bed because that's the area that that cools. This is storage. And again, these are soft clothes, so I can just let them close themselves and they just close themselves. Uh, this is our kitchen cabinet. Over here is more cabinet space and this would have been the hanging closet, but we don't hang clothes, we fold clothes. So we had them remove that and we paid to have more drawers because that is better for us. They apparently had to keep the bar there because, what's that called, the RIA, R R V I A Association, whatever it is, required to have something there because here's where your breaker panel is. And they wanted not to have it there, but they have to have it there because of their rules. Um, these little hatches, there's one here, and I don't know, yeah, there's one over here. These are all storage spaces. So from the end over there, you can open up and go in, but they're very, very deep. So if something small slides way over here, how the hell do you get it? You can open up this, this hatch and you can just grab it and push it to the front or actually take it out from here. So that's why those are there. Let's see, what am I missing? Oh, vitrifrigo. Yes, here's the freezer. To give you an idea of what it is, it goes that far, whatever that is. It comes with a cute little ice tray. And if you have things like small bottles of Coke and Sprite, the ice actually fits into those little bottles. <laughs> so if you need it, there you go. This right here is not something that comes off. This is just part of the insulation. And then, you know, so like if you have a Sprite bottle and you've had it sitting out or something, so it's gotten warm, the ice actually goes right through the perfect size to go right through here and get your stuff cold again. Um, this is the fridge. We used to have more in here. Uh, let's say take really big bikes or something you want to store up here. You're not going to use this back bed. You can actually take these things out and move them out somewhere else. And this folds over so that you could actually have a lot, a big storage area here for big bikes or big whatever you need. We don't tend to do that, so we probably won't do that. We're um, so I'm going to probably leave that as a bed. I was thinking of using it as part of the kitchen cooking space, but I really don't need it. It's amazing what you can do in a small kitchen like that. So, and these little hooks that are on here, this is for if you want to put the shower curtain in the front. We have a dog, so when she is in here and we're out somewhere else and we have the AC on, we're going to put the shower curtain here to cover this area up. We will still have reflectics and stuff on, but we want to cover this up. And she's actually going to be back here somewhere because those lower vents under the bed shoot out cold air, so it's going to be perfect for her. 
So even on a hot day, she's still going to get direct cold air. So she's not going to have any problems at all with that. And like I said, we have never run out of energy yet. I think that's everything. So I'll be seeing you. Take care.